What's up folks, Gabe Montgomery here, Tin Horse Money YouTube channel, and it's springtime, and one of my favorite baits to throw in the spring is, hands down, the spinnerbait. You know, spinnerbaits kind of fell by the wayside due to the popularity of the chatterbait, aka the bladed jig, but it is starting to gain some traction again. There's been some pretty good tournament weights weighed in the last couple years on the spinnerbait, and it's kind of brought it back to popularity. I'm thinking Cumberland Lake is one of those, Lake Cumberland, you know, that was kind of a spinnerbait deal. But let's talk a little bit about the spinnerbait and the conditions and how to kind of choose what colors to use. Let's say you show up at the lake, you know, spring, it's springtime, it's raining a lot. Right now, the water is pretty stained in most parts of the country, especially the lower section of the United States. And you and you face with this stained water, and you're like, "What? What do you choose?" Well, my go-to in that situation, you guys have watched this channel, you've heard me talk about it, but is the Thunder Thumper. You know, just a big single Colorado blade spinner bait. I like the white and chartreuse, and I like about a six or seven size Colorado blade. Some other options in the same kind of water conditions. And when I say same kind of water conditions, I'm talking two foot of visibility or less is when I typically pick up that big thumper. You have painted blades. Um, these are kind of overlooked. I throw painted blades a lot and you gotta kind of try, you gotta mix between the single Colorado and the painted blades. Some days they want one over the other. This is just a half ounce Puya spinner bait. You got a chartreuse blade and a white blade. Both are willow leaves. Willow leaves are gonna throw off a lot more flash but Colorado is going to have a lot more thump. Sometimes that makes a difference. You know, there's several different variations of the painted blades, like this one right here. This is a Cumberland Pro. This has got the big white willow leaf, and it's kind of got this red, kind of metallic looking blade. It's really interesting. Another thing that's popular is to have just a standard gold blade, but then have an orange or white or chartreuse kicker blade on there, just to throw off a little bit of a color and flash. Now those are all baits that I'm going to be throwing when the water is like two foot of visibility or less. Another thing you can throw in there is a short arm spinner bait. This one puts off a lot of thump. This is the Insomniac by Cumberland Pro. You got the painted blade on there. You know, white, white and chartreuse, or sometimes black. This has got a black blade. This is Cumberland Pro. Short arm spinner bait. It throws out a lot of thump. Sometimes red. You know, I, I haven't really thrown a red one, but I know a lot of people like red or tequila sunrise. Um, it's kind of that red thing, you know, red's really popular in the spring on your crankbaits, um, your chatterbaits, anything like that. So why not on a spinnerbait? You know, I have plenty of confidence in a white and chartreuse, so I don't, I honestly haven't really thrown a red one around that much. So if you show up to the lake and the water is not stained, what are some of your options? Um... This, believe it or not, is an all-around color. That white and chartreuse, not the Thunder Thumper, not the painted blades, but just a gold and silver willow leaf. I mean, I throw this, you can even catch them in clear water with this. So this is this is probably a really good all-around spinnerbait for most conditions. But if the water's really, really clear and you need something that's a little bit more translucent, this is a little war eagle. This is, uh, I think this is the sexy shad color. You know, this is something that's translucent. It's kind of semi-see-through. That's what you're looking for in clear water. This is another good color. This is called mouse. Um, if the water is really clear and I'm wanting a lot of flash, I typically like the bigger blade to be silver and the smaller blade to be gold. But I'm always having the gold and silver combo. Um, I just don't throw the double silver and I don't throw the double gold. I think that those two colors just accent their stuff really well. Um, if you know, if you've got an opinion on that, let me know, leave it in the comment section. That's just what I played around with and that's just what I found out. So what are some of the conditions to be throwing a spinnerbait? You need a little wind most of the time. Wind is your friend when you're throwing a spinnerbait. You don't have to have a lot of wind, just something to break up the surface a little bit. The only time that I am not worried about wind is in the early pre-spawn, those days when it's sunny, kind of slick, 
and the water's in the, I don't know, like the mid 40s and then you got a lot of stain, a lot of times those bigger fish will come up to the surface and they'll just be sunning. They'll be kind of hanging around wood, um, grass and stuff. And I think you can still get, well, I know you can still get a spinnerbait bite on those kind of days, especially with, you know, something like this that you're just kind of slow rolling around that hard cover. But most of the time you're looking for some wind, you know, like windy points, windy banks. Um, I like banks that have rock and a little bit of grass mixed in there. Just uh, the grass is kind of sparse and you can kind of throw in between the lanes, something where you've got 10 foot of water out off the front of it and it gets really, really flat. Those fish just kind of pull up in there and they'll feed if the wind's blowing on there. That's an ideal place to be throwing a spinnerbait. Laydowns. Laydowns are key. Wood is good and a spinnerbait is even better than a chatterbait around laydowns. You know, that's chatterbaits are notorious about getting hung up in the wood. Spinnerbaits, that's what they're made for. They're made for coming through that stuff. They do really good around grass too. I catch a lot of fish around grass. As far as a trailer on a spinnerbait, I typically do not put a trailer on a spinnerbait. The only time, there's two times I'll put a trailer on a spinnerbait. Well, there's two trailers that I will put on a spinnerbait. And the times are in the spring when the water's really, really cold and I'm throwing something like this. It's got a real big profile. This is kind of mimicking a gizzard shad. I'll put a big swim bait on there to kind of slow it down and give it a really big profile. The other time is when I want something that's got a more slender profile. I feel like I still need a trailer. I'm going to be putting something like the like the Zoom split tail. You know, that's kind of the traditional. It's just a the double double tail. It's the Zoom split tail is what it's called. Those are really the only two trailers that I will put on there. And to be honest. 95% of the time, I don't put a trailer on there. You know, most of these spinner baits, the skirts are long enough. It gives it that trailer look, especially like these war eagles. They've actually got a longer material in there. So I don't, I don't even mess with the, with the trailer. Um, the, like I said earlier, the only time I'd really mess with the trailer if I want some lift. If I'm really wanting to fish it slow around cover and I need it to be lift, you know, some kind of lift. That's when I'll, that's when I'll put that on there and if I want that big profile. But that's typically in the early spring when the water's still cold and it's really really dirty trailer hooks um i don't run a trailer hook most of the time i'm fishing grass a lot it seems to just snag more grass if you're fishing around wood a trailer hook is going to get caught up in the wood a lot so rule of thumb if you get a couple bites and you're not hooking up and you're pretty sure you got a good hook set you think you got the right color then you might want to put a trailer hook on I mean, a lot of guys do run a trailer hook all the time. If I'm fishing just straight up rock or I'm not fishing hard cover, um, definitely want to put a trailer hook on there. It's, uh, it doesn't hurt and you're not going to get hung up in the wood and, you know, on the grass and stuff. So trailer, you know, trailer hook, it's kind of up to you. Um, but I would definitely, if I'm missing fish, I would definitely consider putting a trailer hook on there. Most of the time when I'm fishing a spinnerbait, it's not a straight retrieve. I'm popping the rod a little bit. I can't really show you because I'm too close. But I'm, but I'm working the reel a lot and I'm using little short twitches. Sometimes I'll just stop it and let it fall next to something and kind of pop it a little bit. Very rarely do I just throw it out and reel it in. The only time I do that, I said very rarely, but sometimes if I'm, if I'm slow rolling it out deeper along the bottom, I will just use kind of a steady retrieve. But for the most part, you want something erratic. You want some change. You want some deflection. You want to make that fish react. And you can do that with your rod and your reel by just doing short little twitches. It's the same thing with a chatterbait or with a swim jig, with a crankbait, you, uh, a rattle bait. You want to add some kind of action to the bait. Just little short pauses, little short twitches. And anytime you get next to any kind of cover that you think a fish is going to be on, I will really slow it down or I'll just let it fall a little bit and maybe just kind of pop it up. You'd be surprised how many times you get a bite when you do that, where if you would have just kept it coming, you, you wouldn't have got that bite. So that's all I really got about spinner baits. I just wanted to share you some tips, some tips with you, some things that I've learned over the years. Um, leave some comments. Let me know, you know, if I missed anything, because um, I certainly would like you guys to add to this. And as always, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do. And give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content. Until next time.